Hello and welcome to 8.5 Notes. Today we're going to be studying properties of trapezoids and kites. Okay, trapezoids and kites. First off, let's start off with trapezoids. So here's a quick review. Remember that a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So it's a quadrilateral. That means it has, uh, it's a four-sided figure, and it has exactly one pair of parallel sides. So that means BC is parallel to AD, but that AB cannot be parallel with CD, okay? If AB were parallel with CD, then you'd have another figure, right? You'd have like either a square or a rectangle or something like that. So a trapezoid uh, is a four-sided figure. Only one pair of sides are parallel. The other two are forced not to be parallel. And then um, the parallel sides, so B, C, and A, D, the parallel sides are called the bases. And sort of different than, um, uh, say, our everyday language of, of a base, like, oh, the base of a lamp is at the bottom, right? The base of the box would be the bottom of the box. But um, not so in... Um, uh, geometry and not, and specifically with the uh, trapezoids and the with the trapezoid this could be called the base and also this could be called the base so don't think of a base as just being the bottom the base can also be on the top so the parallel sides again are called the bases and the non-parallel sides are called the legs okay so we have bases and legs and then um, in a trapezoid uh, any trapezoid has two pairs of base angles. So B and C would be a pair of base angles, and A and D would be a pair of base angles. Okay? Okay, moving right along with definitions. If the legs of a trapezoid are congruent, then the trapezoid is said to be an isosceles trapezoid. So here we have a four-sided figure, a quadrilateral, and this base is parallel with that base. And these are the legs, right? And if the legs are congruent to each other, then it's said to be an isosceles trapezoid. So this is an isosceles trapezoid. Okay? Um, and here's your first theorem that you'll be responsible for. If a trapezoid is isosceles, then each, each pair of base angles is congruent. So uh, in this trapezoid ABCD, it's isosceles because this leg is congruent with that leg. And therefore, angle A is congruent with angle D. That's why you have the two tick marks. And angle B is congruent with angle C. So the uh, pair of base angles will be congruent to each other. And each pair will be congruent to each other. Okay? And then we have uh, our next theorem here. If a trapezoid has a pair of congruent base angles, then it is an isosceles trapezoid. So in this case, uh, if angle A is congruent to angle D, and if, uh, or if rather, I should say or, or if angle B is congruent to angle C, then the trapezoid must be an isosceles trapezoid. So it's just uh, the converse of the um, previous theorem that we had. Okay, And then moving right along, the next theorem, a trapezoid is isosceles if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So you have this trapezoid ABCD and um, its isosceles if and only if this diagonal AC, uh, let me change colors here, if AC is congruent with BD. Okay, if they're congruent, then the trapezoid must be an isosceles trapezoid, okay? The legs would then equal each other, okay? And then moving right along with uh, some more definitions, uh, you may recall that a mid-segment of a triangle is a segment that connects the midpoints of two sides of the triangle. Well, similarly, the mid-segment of a trapezoid is the segment that connects the midpoints of its legs, okay? So here you have a trapezoid, this is the mid-segment, and it uh, bisects this leg and bisects this leg, okay? So then that would be the mid-segment. Quite, quite similar sort of uh, concept to the mid-segment of a triangle. And uh, here's a, an important theorem um, that you will definitely be responsible for. It's sort of a favorite uh, question that you'll see on, on um, 
you know, uh, standardized tests like the Star 9, which is kind of fading out. But um, uh, I imagine it will be on the new Common Core, uh, definitely on SAT exams, and, and, and definitely you'll be responsible for it in Chapter 8 and, uh, you know, the final exam. It's sort of a favorite um, uh, theorem that's uh, used a lot and, and You'll, you'll find questions about it quite often. So you definitely want to um, understand this. It's the mid-segment theorem for trapezoids, which mid-segment theorem for trapezoids, which states that the mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to each base and its length is one half the sum of the lengths of the bases. Okay, so to explain that here, we have um, this trapezoid A, B, C, D, and if MN is the mid-segment, okay, then MN, the mid-segment, is going to be parallel to AB, and it's going to be parallel to DC. So all three of these, the two bases and the mid-segment, are going to be parallel to each other. And what is more, to find this length, the length of MN, you basically take the average of AB and CD, okay? You take AB, add it with the length of CD, and divide by 2, or like I said, take the average, and you find the length of mn, okay? So what kind of problems might you expect to get regarding trapezoids? Well, here is one. In trapezoid J, K, L, M, angle J and angle M are right angles, and the measure of J, K is equal to 9 inches, and the measure of ML is equal to 15 inches. Sketch trapezoid JKLM and its mid-segment, and then find the length of the mid-segment NP of JKLM. Okay, so at this point you can pause the presentation and uh, sketch the trapezoid JKLM yourself. Um, and of course, at any point in this presentation, always feel free to um, you know stop it, rewind, uh, you know do what you need to do in order to um, you know, write the notes or catch up or anything like that. Remember, you're in total control. But for the sake of um, this presentation, I'm going to continue. And so my sketch of trapezoid JKLM is right here. So you can see angle J and uh, angle M are right angles. <clears throat> and JK is 9 inches and ML is 15 inches. And I drew my mid-segment. And it's also referred to as mid-segment NP, so I just went ahead and labeled it NP. Okay, so there's my uh, sketch of trapezoid JKLM. And then it says, find the length of the mid-segment NP. Remember uh, the, uh, the theorem we just had, that uh, the mid-segment is basically just the average of the two bases. So, moving right along, we have N. P, the mid-segment, the length of the mid-segment, is equal to one-half the length of JK plus the length of ML. So, substituting in values that we know, we have one-half is equal to 9 plus 15, because the measure of JK is 9 and the measure of LM, uh, ML is 15. And then moving right along, we have the measure of NP is equal to one-half of 9 plus 15, which is 24, and half of 24 is 12. Okay, so NP is 12 inches long. Um, and then, like I said at the beginning of this lecture, today's lecture is on trapezoids and kites. So moving right along to the definition of a kite. A kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, but the opposite sides are not congruent to each other. Okay, so a quadrilateral, again, is a four-sided figure, and it has two pairs of of consecutive congruent sides. Remember the word consecutive means right next to each other? So these are the consecutive congruent sides. They are congruent to each other. And then it has two pairs of them. So these two um, consecutive sides are also congruent. But the opposite sides are not congruent to each other. Again, if they were congruent to each other, you'd have you know a different figure like a square or something. So they have to be um, uh, one has to be longer than the other. One has to be kind of elongated uh, in relation to the other one, and that then would be um, uh, the definition of a kite. Okay, um, and then uh, some uh, a theorem here regarding a kite is if a quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are perpendicular. 
So you have this kite, and these blue line segments are the diagonals, and they are perpendicular to each other. Okay? So in quadrilateral ABCD, um, if quadrilateral ABCD is a kite, then AC is perpendicular to BD. Okay? And if a quadrilateral is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite sides are congruent. So if this quadrilateral, ABCD, is a kite, then BC is going to be congruent with BA, okay? And angle A is going to be congruent with angle C, but angle B is not going to be congruent with angle D, okay? These two will not be congruent, okay? And I just realized that when I read the theorem, I read it incorrectly, so I apologize for that. I said, then exactly one pair of opposite sides are congruent. I should have said, should have used the word angles. So uh, let me review that again one more time. Basically, this theorem is stating that in a kite, you'll have exactly one pair of opposite angles that are congruent. So that's going to be congruent with that, like angle A is going to be congruent with angle C. And then that's it. These two, angle B and angle D, cannot be congruent. Okay? Um, so everything I said was, was correct. And when I explained it even the first time, I, I said everything correctly. It was just when I was reading the theorem, I said uh, the word sides instead of the word angles. And so I hope that didn't trip you up. Okay? Again, it's one pair are going to be congruent and the other pair are not going to be congruent. So, what kind of problems might you expect regarding this theorem in, in relation to kites? Well, here's one. In a kite, the measures of the angles are 3x degrees, 75 degrees, 90 degrees, and 120 degrees. Find the value of x. And then, what are the measures of the angles that are congruent? Okay, so we have a kite, and remember that a kite is a four-sided figure, it's a quadrilateral, right? So we can use this formula, n minus 2 times 180 degrees, where n is the number of sides. So again, it's a four-sided figure times 180, so 4 minus 2 times 180 degrees is 360 degrees. Oh, so the sum of the measures of the internal angles of a kite is equal to 360 degrees, just like in a rectangle or a square or really any other four-sided figure, right? All quadrilaterals are going to have an internal angular measurement. The sum will be 360 degrees. Okay, so moving right along. Um, for this particular kite, we have 3x, 75, 90, and 120, totaling 360. So I'll add these here and get 3x plus 285 is equal to 360. Subtract 285 from both sides and get that 3x is equal to 75. Divide both sides by 3, and finally you get x is equal to 25. Okay, so that's the answer. So let's find the value of x. x is 25. And then it asks, what are the measures of the angles that are congruent? Well, if x is 25 and you have 3x degrees there, 25 times 3 must mean that's 75, which matches with this here, 75. And so, to answer the question, what are the measures of the angles that are congruent? 75 degrees. So we have two pairs of opposite angles that are congruent, 75 degrees, matching with 75 degrees. And then these two cannot be the same. In a kite, if you have two that are the same, for example, the 75 and the 75, then you have the 90 and the 120. Those two cannot be the same. Okay? So um, that's the end of the lecture. Uh, as usual, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me at your convenience, and it would be my pleasure to help you. Okay? Bye-bye.